بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين صلى الله وسلم على سيدنا محمد سيد الأولين والآخرين وعلى جميع إخوانه من النبيين والمرسلين وآل كل وصحب كل ومن تبعهم بإحسان إلى يوم الدين All praise is due to Allah and may Allah raise the rank of Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him and protect his nation from that which he fears for them. Dear brothers and sisters in Islam, let us first have the proper intention of our hearts to attend the lesson for the obedience of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. In our previous lesson, we started explaining the meanings of Surah Abbas, which is the third surah of the last part of the Qur'an. I'll go over what we explained last week briefly, then we'll continue insha'Allah ta'ala. Allah ta'ala said, Abasa wa tawalla and this surah was in reference to an incident that happened at the time of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. The Prophet was preoccupied calling some of the leaders of Quraysh to embrace Islam and he was very keen that they would accept his call become Muslims and thus the followers, those behind them would follow their lead as well and they embrace Islam as well. As he was preoccupied calling these leaders of Quraysh to become Muslims, a blind man who was already a Muslim called Abdullah ibn Umm Maktoum, one of the companions, came to the Prophet وسلم, and said to him, teach me from what Allah taught you. Now the Prophet وسلم, continued his talk to the leaders of Quraysh, hoping that they would accept his call. He did not give him an immediate attention. And that is not haram, it's not a sin for the Prophet it wasn't a sin because he was busy in something else and he was keen as we mentioned that the leaders of Quraysh might embrace Islam and if they embrace Islam many behind them would follow their lead and become Muslims as well so he came to ask the Prophet and the Prophet was fully engaged in something else, calling those leaders of Quraysh to become Muslims. So the Prophet did not give him an immediate attention, and that wasn't a sin. But that person, Abdullah ibn Umm Maktoum, repeated his question several times, teach me, teach me. And the Prophet was focusing, as we mentioned, on calling those leaders to become Muslims. So the Prophet was slightly bothered by the interruption of this companion to him. Slightly bothered. But the Prophet وسلم, did not harm this blind man. So the Prophet frowned. The Prophet frowned. Now that was a blind person, number one. Number two, the Prophet frowned for what reason? Because he was slightly bothered because he was interrupted by the companion. But the Prophet did not harm that companion in any way. So he did not commit a sin. So this surah was revealed to the Prophet and in this surah there is a gentle and mild reproof to the Prophet. The proof means blame, a slight and gentle and mild blame to the Prophet 
because he did not give the person an immediate attention although the Prophet was occupied with something else so Allah Ta'ala said Abasa wa tawalla, which means the Prophet frowned and turned his face away when the blind man came to him but O Muhammad how would you know that he might purify himself that is by your words or that he might learn from your preaching and benefit by it as for the one who turned away from the correct belief and Quran because of one's wealth because those leaders the Prophet was talking to were rich and because they were rich they did not follow Islam and they did not believe in the Quran and Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam so they got satisfied with the wealth Allah gave them and they did not have the correct belief in their hearts so amma man istaghna meaning as for the one who turned away from the correct belief and quran because of one's wealth فَأَنْتَ لَهُ تَصَدَّى to him do you attend you are giving them the attention and those who refuse to become muslims because of their wealth وَمَا عَلَيْكَ أَلَّا يَزَّكَّى Although it is no blame on you if the blasphemer does not purify himself with Islam. So if they don't become Muslims, you are not blamed. You cannot create guidance in their hearts. You can't do this. So you gave them the attention instead of that person hoping that they would become Muslims. But even if they don't, there is no blame on you. If they don't become Muslims <laughs> but as to the one who hastened to you seeking goodness and knowledge he came quickly rushing to the Prophet to learn from the Prophet and was fearful of Allah of him you were preoccupied meaning after this time do not do the same and this is as we mentioned is a gentle and mild and slight blame not because the prophet committed a sin no it wasn't a sin but it's a gentle blame after this time do not do the same for the Quran contains preaching and is enlightening to the creations so when you teach him he will be enlightened he will be benefited when you teach him therefore let whoever wills memorize the Quran and learn from its lessons and we mentioned that after this incident the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam used to give a great concern to this companion Abdullah ibn Umm Maktoum and whenever the Prophet used to see him he used to say I welcome the one because of whom Allah mildly and gently reproved me and he used to ask him if he has any need from the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and the Prophet gave him some tasks later on to show his concern towards this great companion. We'll continue now, inshaAllah ta'ala. Fi This reminder, which is the preachments contained therein in the Quran is affixed in honorable books Ar-Razi and An-Nasafi said 
They are honorable books copied from the guarded tablet. The angels copy from the guarded tablet, from Allah al Mahfuz. So it is in these books. It was also said that these are the books revealed to the prophets, as in the saying of Allah Ta'ala in Surah Al A'la. إن هذا لفي الصحف الأولى صحف إبراهيم وموسى meaning in this book and the previous books there is a reminder, preachment by which people would benefit it was also mentioned that what is meant by the honorable books is the guarded tablet itself which is above the seven skies the guarded tablet is very, very wide and it's written on it what happened from the first creation, water, until people of paradise go to paradise and people of hellfire go to hellfire. It's written there. So all what's happening with you is written in the preserved and the guarded tablet. Marfu'atim mutahara. These books are of sublime status and are kept pure and holy. They are touched only by the purified creatures and those are the angels. So these books, for the angels, they write in them while they copy from the guarded tablet. These books are touched only by the purified angels. B.A.D. Safara, Ibn Abbas and others said, these pure and honored books are in the hands of the honorable angels who copy. Safara means those who write. Those who write. And they say to a book, Sifr. And uh, it means a book. Writings in a book. So, safara, plural of safir here, meaning those who write, those who write. So, the angels, they write, they copy from the guarded tablet, and these books are in their hands, and they are purified books and honored books. Kiramim barara, these angels are honorable, pious, and always obedient to Allah. All the angels... All the angels are obedient to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They fulfill the obligations and they never commit a sin. They never disobey Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. As Allah said in the Quran, لا يعصون الله ما أمرهم ويفعلون ما يؤمرون Meaning those angels never disobey Allah and they fulfill the orders of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So any story that you might hear or read in a book which talks about the angels in a way to say about them that they were disobedient to Allah, you know, it's a fabrication. It's not an authenticated story. Like some people, they fabricate a story about the two angels, Harut and Marut, who were sent down in the past and they were mentioned in the Quran to teach people sorcery in order to make people able to distinguish between miracles and sorcery. Allah sent them for that reason, to teach people sorcery but at the same time to tell them if you practice this sorcery you are sinful and they said to them innama nahnu fitna we are temptation for you because we are teaching you sorcery only for one reason so you can distinguish between sorcery and miracles you would be able to differentiate between them now they taught people sorcery and they warned them against practicing sorcery. And those are mentioned in Surah Al-Baqarah. So that was the whole story. But some people, subhanAllah, 
they fabricated something about them. They said that they disobeyed Allah, they drank alcohol, and they committed adultery and fornication. And then, والعياذ بالله, were transformed into stars. This is not true. That's a fabrication. But what is true is that they were sent by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to teach people sorcery at that time because it, it was very widespread how sorcery is made, how they make it, in order to differentiate between sorcery and miracles. We mentioned as well previously in the previous surah that the Pharaoh of Egypt gathered for Prophet Musa السلام, many sorcerers and they threw their robes and sticks and staffs and they affected the eyes of people. People thought they were slithering snakes. But when Prophet Musa السلام, threw his staff, it turned into a huge real snake and it ate everything they've thrown on the ground that what made the sorcerers admit that Islam is the right religion and that what made them believe in Allah and believe in Prophet Moses and they became Muslims. Because they know what Prophet Musa showed them is a miracle, cannot be sorcery, cannot be witchcraft, it's a miracle. That's why they embrace Islam for that reason. So the reason why Allah sent these two angels, Harut and Marut, mentioned in Surah Al-Baqarah, is to teach people sorcery so they can differentiate between sorcery and miracles. But they did tell them, we are temptation for you. Because we are teaching you sorcery not to practice it, rather to differentiate between sorcery and miracles. So this is one of the fabrications that you might read in some of the books about the angels and this is not true. Also some people might say that Iblis was an angel. Iblis was never an angel. Iblis is the first jinn Allah created and Allah created him from the pure flame of fire. That's why when Allah ordered Iblis and the angels to prostrate, make sujood to Adam out of salutation and glorification to so show that this type of creation, the human being, is more honored and has a higher status than the type of angels and the type of jinn. Why? Because amongst the human beings are the prophets. So this type has a higher status. When Allah ordered the angels and Iblis to make sujood to Adam, angels did because they obey Allah at all times. However, Satan refused. What did he say? He said, why should I do so when in fact I'm better than him? I'm created from fire and he's created from clay. So, and that's mentioned in the Quran. That shows that he knows he's created from fire. And the angels, as the Prophet said, are created from light. The Prophet said that Allah created the angels from light and created the jinn from fire. So Iblis was the first jinn Allah created. He was created from fire. And because he was arrogant and jealous, he objected to Allah's order. He was a believer at the beginning. His name was Azazil. When he objected to Allah's order, he became a blasphemer. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala called him Iblis, meaning the one who is far away from the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The one who was far away from the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So Iblis was never an angel. He was the first jinn Allah created. So some people fabricate also about, about Satan, and they say Satan was an angel. Some say he was the leader of the angels. And this is not true. This is not true. And some even say he's the best of the angels. 
the best of the angels and the leader of all angels is angel Jibreel alayhi salam. So this is not true what they say. Plus, in the Quran, Allah Ta'ala said about Iblis, So Allah in this ayah confirms that Satan has offspring, children. And it's very well known that angels are not males nor females and they do not reproduce. So they do not get married because they're not males or females and they do not reproduce. But for Satan, Allah Ta'ala said, So he has an offspring. So he is not an angel. So all the angels are obedient to Allah. And that's uh, what is meant in this ayah. Kiramim barara. They are highly honored by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They are pious and always obedient to Allah azza wa jal. قُتِلَ الْإِنسَانُ مَا أَكْفَرَهُ Ibn al-Munthir related from the root of Ikrima that he said, this ayah was revealed about Utbah ibn Abi Lahab. Utbah ibn Abi Lahab, one of the non-believers, when he said, كَفَرْتُ بِرَبِّ النَّجْمِ Meaning, I disbelieve in the Lord who created the star. That's what uh, this non-believer said. Utbah ibn Abi Lahab said, كَفَرْتُ بِرَبِّ النَّجْمِ Meaning, I disbelieve in the Lord who created the star. This ayah means, damned is the blasphemer. How severe is his blasphemy? And the linguistic form of the term qutila in Allah's saying appears to be a, a form of supplication. However, Allah is a clear of supplicating. Allah does not supplicate anyone. We supplicate Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Meaning we ask Allah for things. Allah does not supplicate anyone. So that form in the Arabic uh, structure, قُتِلَ الْإِنسَانُ قُتِلَ الْإِنسَانُ Now it can be used as a form of supplication, but here it doesn't mean supplication form. And however, Allah is a clear of supplicating, thus the intended meaning is the severe dispraise of the blasphemy of the blasphemers. Qutila al-insan, meaning damned the blasphemers. How severe the blasphemy is. So that would be the meaning of this ayah. Likewise, the linguistic form of the term ma akfarah in Allah's saying appears to reflect wonder however Allah is a clear from wondering so the intended meaning of the ayah is to make everyone appalled by the severity of the blasphemy of the blasphemers so that would be the meaning hence the meaning therein is it is duly rightful to say about the blasphemer he is damned for his blasphemy is extremely severe so that would be the meaning of the ayah قُتِلَ الْإِنسَانُ مَا أَكْفَرَهُ Damned is the blasphemer. How severe his blasphemy is. The ayah would mean it is duly rightful to say about the blasphemer he is damned for his blasphemy is extremely severe. Damned he means he is deprived and ostracized from any goodness. Prevented deprived of any goodness. Wonder is an emotion that occurs when one is ignorant of or is in awe of a certain thing. Some wise men said, wonder is the thing whose cause is ambiguous. That's when you get wondered about something. This is why scholars like Allah ibn Asbahani said it is none befitting to attribute wandering to Allah because Allah is the one who knows 
all the unforeseen and nothing is hidden from his knowledge subhanahu wa ta'ala when do you wonder when you become surprised of something that you didn't know about you wonder how this happened because you don't have full knowledge about it but for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and Allah knows everything Allah knows everything about the creations before creating the creations Allah knows what happened what's happening what's going to happen in future what is not happening if it were to happen how it's going to happen Allah knows about it so Allah knows everything nothing is hidden from the knowledge of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that's why wonder is none befitting to be attributed to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so here the ayah makes us wonder about the severity of the blasphemy of the blasphemers so the creations the slaves once you read this ayah قُتِلَ الْإِنسَانُ مَا أَكْفَرَهُ here you would wonder about the severity of the blasphemy of the blasphemer why would he reach that level of blasphemy? And look at the following ayah. Min shay'in Why he is arrogant? Why he is committing that severe blasphemy? When in fact, he was created from a very insignificant thing. The ayah, Min shay'in brings to light that the blasphemer has no reason to act arrogantly did he not see what he was created from and this is an interrogatory format to establish that he was created from a very insignificant thing then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala explains from what thing a human being is created the messenger of Allah said in part of his hadith narrated by al-Bukhari and Muslim from the root of Ibn Mas'ud ثم يكون علقة مثل ذلك ثم يكون مضغة مثل ذلك ثم يرسل الله الملك فينفخ فيه الروح ويؤمر بأربع كلمات بكتب رزقه وأجله وعمله وشقي أم سعيد This hadith means the creation of one of you starts as a نطفة a mixture actually of both seminal liquid from the man and the woman for 40 days in his mother's womb then as a alaqa a thick coagulated blood clot that's the alaqa a thick coagulated blood clot for the same duration for another 40 days and then as a mudra looks in size like a bite of meat that's a mudra for the same duration of time so 40 days nutfa a mixture actually of both seminal liquid from the man and the woman then it stays like that for 40 days then he turns into Alaqa. Alaqa, it's like a blood clot. Blood clot that gets attached to the wall of the womb. And it stays like this for 40 days. Then after that it turns into mudra. Mudra is like a piece of meat, like a bite, one bite of meat. So and it stays for another 40 days. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sends the angel to blow the soul into him and is ordered to write four matters the person's sustenance what he's gonna get in this life so before you came out of this world 
what you're going to get is written. They say in the Arabic slang something. They say, "Rakod rakad luhush, ghar rizqak ma bethush." Meaning, even if you want to, what do like the most in this life, and you want to run, follow all the means available for you to gather money in this life, you won't get except what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala willed for you to get. Even if something gets into your hand, if Allah did not will for you to get it, you won't be able to get it. If it's not part of your sustenance, you might buy something and it's in your hand, but it's not your sustenance. That's why your sustenance is written down before you are born. And that makes the believer comfortable in this life. He would say, I will try my best, I will work, I will do this and that because I want to provide my family with the basic needs. But I know in the end, if Allah did not will for me to get that thing, I won't be able to get it. One of the righteous Muslims, I like this story, subhanAllah, when we talk about sustenance. It makes the person feel comfortable. One of the righteous Muslims in the past, he had money and he bought grapes. And he was eating grapes. And he had a small like bunch he was eating from. He ate all of them. Except for one grape. The last one. Look, he bought it with his own money. And it was in his hand and he was eating them not only that he reached the last one so he said he mentioned this story he said I wanted to you know have fun eating this last one sometimes if you're eating something the last one you start eating small you know pieces you want it to last for longer so that last one he wanted to eat it in a very special way so he threw it in the air and he wanted to get it into his mouth that last one he managed to get it into his mouth but it got stuck in his throat now he couldn't spit it out and he couldn't swallow it look now what is it now he bought it with his own money it was in his hand not only that now the last one is in his throat here but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala did not will for him to get it. So after like a while he managed to spit it out. As he spat it out, it rolled on the ground and there was a little boy came from, maybe from the neighbors. He was walking, he saw this great rolling on the ground, he grabbed it quickly and he ate it. So it was written for who? For whom? For that little baby. So although that person is the one who bought it, he paid money for it, and he was eating them, it was in his mouth, it wasn't meant to be his. That's why he couldn't get it into his stomach. That's why your sustenance is written, was written for you when you were still in the womb of your mother. And also his dates, his death time, and whether he is among the people of paradise or the people of hellfire. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said in the Quran, Inna khalaqna al-insana min nutu'fatin amshaj. Min nutu'fatin amshaj. Meaning from a mixture of both seminal liquid from the man and the woman. And Allah Ta'ala said in the Quran as well, يَخْرُجُ مِن بَيْنِ الصُّلْبِ وَالتَّرَائِبِ Meaning that the seminal liquid of the man comes from the bones of his back and that fluid of the woman comes from the bones of the chest. يَخْرُجُ مِن بَيْنِ الصُّلْبِ That's from the back bones of the man from the chest bones of the lady 
And when these two liquids come together in the womb, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala willed for that woman to be pregnant, that mixture will come together and will form what we call nutfa. So the nutfa is a mixture of both liquids, that of the man and that of the woman. But nowadays, some of the so-called modern scientists, they deny that a woman has fluid. And they say the woman does not have many. And they say now in Arabic many is used for both. For the sperm and for the uh, fluid of the woman which is similar to the sperm of the man. In Arabic you say many for both. And also the Prophet referred to this as ma as well. The Prophet used to use that term as well. Ma al-rajul and ma al-mar'a. And he is referring to both liquids. Now, now some modern scientists say that uh, a woman has only, they say, eggs. And the sperm, that's many, is only for the man, not for, for the woman. And when fertilization happens, they believe that that sperm fertilizes the egg and that's it. And there is no many for the woman, no fluid that is similar to the sperm of the man for the woman. This is not true. This is against the Quran. In the Quran, it's mentioned min nutu'fatin amshajin from a mixture of both liquids that when the baby is or that's the first stage of a baby, that's the nutfa, the mixture of both semen and liquid from both ways. Now also in the hadith, the Prophet وسلم, was asked, how would a lady get pregnant with a baby boy or a baby girl? Or sometimes the baby would be born resembling his father more than his mother and vice versa. And the Prophet said, إِذَا عَلَى مَاءُ الرَّجُلِ مَاءَ الْمَرْأَ أَذْكَرَا بِإِذْنِ اللَّهِ وَإِذَا عَلَى مَاءُ الْمَرْأَةِ مَاءَ الرَّجُلِ آنَثَا بِإِذْنِ اللَّهِ Meaning if the sperm of the husband at the time of fertilization, making that mixture dominated, meaning was stronger than that of the woman, so it dominated, then she will carry a baby boy by the will of Allah. And if her fluid was stronger than the sperm of the man at the time of fertilization and the formation of that mixture, they will have a baby girl by the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So that what was mentioned in the hadith. And there is another narration that says Naza' al-walad and Naza'at al-walad. Meaning the child will be born more resembling his father or his mother based on what dominates. Now which is stronger at the time of fertilization. Which is stronger at the time of fertilization. Now. That's what is mentioned in the Quran and Hadith. So do not give a listening ear to those uh, modern scientists who come with theories, especially those who are called the advocates of cloning. Those, the advocates of cloning, they believe, and this is not true. They say that a lady can get pregnant without the sperm of the man. They say they take from his body, a piece of his body, from the, his hair, from his skin, the DNA and genes, whatever. And they say they fertilize the egg of the woman with uh, that DNA, whatever they call it. And then she would get pregnant and she will give birth to a child who is identical to that person. Not only that, they went further by saying 
we managed to break all the codes. Now, if we see a person who is tall, we take from the DNA, we break the code, and they have what you call it, like a code for a tall person, then a code for a person with blue eyes, then a code for white person, dark person, whatever, then they have all these codes they claim, then they would say to a lady, okay, what child would you have? What would you want? Okay, you want him tall? Okay. Blue eyes? Yes. Uh, how do you want it? Whatever, tick, tick, tick. Uh, they take from all these codes. Al-Azam, they are pre-ordering a child. And they, then they have all these combinations and they say they fertilize the egg in the woman and then she will get pregnant and give child with all these specifications. This never happened and it will never happen because we believe in the Quran. So if there is no sperm of the husband, there is no pregnancy. There is no pregnancy. But those people like they uh, con people and they deceive them and thus the advocates of cloning were busted many times in the news papers robbing people ripping them off by saying to them give us money and we'll give you such and such and they exposed them in many news papers so do not listen to them they believed that they made cloning for sheep Dolly they call it, and they never showed it to people. Then after that they said, unfortunately it died. That sheep died. They said that was a cloning of a sheep. They come up with things that are not true. Now always whenever you hear something, do not trust to believe in it. Go and see if there is something mentioned about this in the Quran or in the Hadith. So you won't oppose the Qur'an or the Hadith. Don't say to me, yeah, but they say they have proofs and evidence, whatever, whatever. They always say that. In the past they said the earth is flat and if you walk to the end of it, you fall off. And they said they have proofs and evidence. Then they said it's completely round. Then they said, no, 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 it has the ellipse shape, like an egg. Then recently they said because it's turning around an axis as they claim very fast it became narrow from the top while from the bottom like a pear. What is the proof? What is the proof? Now assumptions, theories, uh, hallucinations, what do you want to call them, they come up with and some people anything that is strange they'd like to take and start talking about it. The child or the baby, the fetus, this is how it is formed. As the scholars mention and as mentioned in the Quran. So the meaning of the ayah is that, is that arrogance and tyranny are not suitable for the one whose origin is a nutfah and then alaqa and then mudra Allah made the person develop in due stages until he was completely created and made Allah made his hands formed his hands, his feet, his eyes and the rest of his body parts beautiful or ugly, tall or short and foreordained him whether he is among the dwellers of paradise or hellfire so he's formed inside the womb of his mother through these stages by the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So the, that mixture develops by the will of Allah into a alaqa. Then by the will of Allah it develops into a mudra then the angel will blow the soul in, into the fetus and these four matters will be written down. His sustenance, his death time, his dates 
and whether he is going to be amongst the inhabitants of paradise or the inhabitants of hellfire. So this is what is mentioned in the Quran about the formation of the baby inside the womb of his mother. Min nutfatin khalaqahu from that mixture Allah created him faqaddarahu made it develop into stages while inside the womb of his mother. So the ayah means why this blasphemer is getting so arrogant when in fact if he looks at his origin he is originated from what? From that mixture. And uh, one of the scholars as well said O oh, son of Adam why should display arrogance and you show off what in fact you came out of the exit of urine twice so why should a person show arrogance let him look at his origin from that mixture so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is showing the non-believers that their arrogance and tyranny is meaningless they should not be arrogant or tyrant when they look at the fact from what thing they were created from from that insignificant thing also Allah said in the Quran in that water yani, that liquid that fluid that is insignificant so why should a person display arrogance Allah created the cervix as the outer end of the womb to facilitate the exit path of human being. When the time of his delivery comes near, Allah inspires the fetus to turn his body around so that his head is down after it was towards the upper part of his mother's abdomen. Praise be to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the creator of a human being and the form. Now, you know, like they check the baby, it hasn't turned yet. When it's close to childbirth, subhanAllah, Allah inspires their fetus to turn around. Then his head will be down. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has a perfect power. Look at the creations of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and that will reflect the perfect power of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You would ponder about the power of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It was said by Al Hassan and Mujahid that the ayah means Allah facilitated for him the knowledge of the roots of goodness and of evil. That's another interpretation. But uh, many interpreters of the Quran said, Thumma sabila yassara, Allah facilitated for him uh, the way to exit out of the womb of his mother. So that would be the meaning of it. Thumma amatahu. Allah causes him to die and be buried in a grave instead of lying on the surface of the earth to be eaten by scavengers and beasts. That's why when a Muslim dies, we bury him. That's to show dignity to the Muslim. Muslim has dignity. So when he dies, we bury him. Why we bury him? First of all, scavengers and other beasts and animals, wild animals, wouldn't be able to dig his grave up and take his corpse out of the grave and eat it. So we respect, as a respect to this Muslim, we bury him. Also, when we bury him, the smell doesn't reach people. That's another reason. That's why in some cemeteries now, they have a way where they put them in like drawers 
for non-Muslims, they have like a drawers and like drawers they put the person in a drawer and close it up. Then another person dies, put him in another drawer and so on. So in drawers they put them above each other. It's above the ground. A Muslim cannot be buried in one of these. Why? Because this does not prevent the smell from being exposed to others. That's forbidden. That's haram. Also burning the Muslim. That is not allowed as well. Burning is not a sign of showing respect to him. Then putting him in a little can or bottle for instance. That's not a respect for Muslim. Now to respect the Muslim, you bury him. And uh, for other reasons as well. Then after his death, Allah quickens and resurrects him. Meaning Allah brings him back to life, then resurrects this person. Allah is the only one who knows the appointed time of the resurrection. And he has a term, Kalla, in this ayah denotes severe scolding and reprimanding of the blasphemer for his blasphemy. For he did not obey Allah's orders to believe in him and be obedient to him, subhanahu wa ta'ala. So he did not obey Allah. He committed blasphemy. Yeah, it's referring to the blasphemers. Let man ponder about how Allah created food for him and how that food enters and exits his body. And this is an invitation for the heart to think about the greatness of the power of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this means Allah makes the rain pour down abundantly from the clouds. And causes the plants to emerge when they come to surface, they split the uh, earth. فَأَنْبَتْنَا فِيهَا حَبَّا Allah creates all the staple grains on earth such as wheat and barley. وَعِنَبًا وَقَضْبًا Also Allah creates grapes and dates. Ibn Abbas said Al-Qadub that's the dates because they cut them off the date trees. Al-Qadub means to cut off. So the dates are called Qadub, Qadub because they are cut off the date trees and the palm trees. Allah creates olives and date trees. Likewise, Allah creates many orchards dense with lofty trees, as mentioned by a Zajjaj. Meaning Allah creates fruits of different kinds and forages for the animals as was mentioned by Ibn Abbas. It was also said that the ayah refers to the moist fruits. The aforementioned ayahs from 27 to 31 state things Allah created for the benefit of mankind and his livestock, among which are the camels, cows and sheep. So when one ponders about the creations of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, when one thinks about the endowments bestowed upon him by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he knows that Allah bestowed upon him many endowments in this life uncountable endowments that will make him thankful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala obedient to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and not arrogant and tyrant 
We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us amongst those who are obedient to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala at all times. We ask Allah to keep us away from sins as east is far from west and to make us amongst those who die as righteous Muslims. Ameen. So I'll uh, recite the verses that we explained tonight, insha'Allah. And uh, you say after me, insha'Allah ta'ala. Say, Fi suhufim mukarramah Marfu'atim mutahharah بأيدي سفرة كرام بررة قتل الإنسان ما أكفرة من أي شيء خلقه من نطفة خلقه فقدره ثم السبيل يسره ثم أماته فأقبره ثم إذا شاء أنشره كلا لما يقض ما أمره فلينظر الإنسان إلى طعامه أنا صببنا الماء صبا ثم شققنا الأرض شقا فأنبتنا فيها حبا وعنبا وقضبا وزيتونا ونخلا وحدائق غلبا وفاكهة وأبا متاعا لكم ولأنعامكم إن شاء الله بريفلي will explain the meanings of them from what we started tonight. في صحف مكرمة Enlightenments contained in books held in a great honor. مرفوعة مطهرة Dignified and kept pure and holy. بأيدي سفرة Written by the hands of the copying angels. كرام بررة Who are honored by the Lord and are obedient to Him. قتل الإنسان ما أكفره Cursed is the blasphemer How severe is his blasphemy من أي شيء خلقه Doesn't he know from what thing did Allah create him من نطفة خلقه فقدره Allah created him from a sperm drop Then completed his features in due stages ثم السبيل يسره Then Allah made the path for of his delivery smooth for him ثم أماته فأقبره then Allah causes him to die and be buried ثم إذا شاء أنشره then when it is Allah's will he will resurrect him كلا لما يقض ما أمره by no means has the blasphemy fulfilled the orders of Allah فلينظر الإنسان إلى طعامه then let man take lessons by looking at how Allah provided his food. For that Allah pours water abundantly from the clouds. 
ثُمَّ شَقَقْنَ الْأَرْضَ شَقَّا And Allah makes the plants split the earth as they emerge فَأَنْبَتْنَا فِيهَا حَبَّا And produces therein staple grains وَعِنَبًا وَقَضْبًا And grapes and dates وَزَيْتُونًا وَنَخْلًا And olive and palm trees وَحَدَائِقَ غُلْبًا And enclosed gardens dense with lofty trees وَفَاكِهَةً وَأَبَّا And a diversity of fruits and forages مَتَاعًا لَكُمْ وَلِأَنْعَامِكُمْ A provision for you and your livestock. Barakallahu feekum and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows best. We say la ilaha illallah three times.